What makes a great leader very often is their voice. I'm not talking about their tone of their voice. I'm talking about what they do with their voice and how they lead with their voice. Well, today, I'm going to help you find your voice, so stick around. Hey, it's a trigger, Rich Bond Trigger. Welcome back to another Leaders and Communicators. I'm sharing for my 25 years as a professional broadcaster, communicator, and leader to help you defy the odds and improve your skills as a leader. Now, in my 25 years, I have learned a great deal about using the voice more effectively, both as a broadcaster and as a leader. It's amazing how much we do with our voice and we don't even know that we make or break it with our voice. So today I'm going to give you five helpful insights to help you find your voice. But as we go through this today, I want to hear from you. So give me a like, give me a share, give me a comment. Always hit that little bell down there and you'll never miss another Leaders and Communicators on my channel. So let's get right into it. What type of a leadership voice do you have or do you want to have? I think there are five different major voices out there as leaders. So number one is the general. Maybe you have that leadership voice where you are known as a guy that barks out the orders. You bark. You bark and you bite. You're the general. You can take every hill, but it's always going to be passion. It's always going to be fire. Now, I love passion. I love fire. But sometimes generals blow through people when they communicate. Your fire and energy can be misunderstood as being anger, as being frustration, as being just everybody shut up and get out of my way, right? So you might be a general. Now, some generals are really good. They set a tone, they set the agenda, and they also all rally the troops around them to further their mission and their goals. Well, let's be honest. We've all had bosses that come off like a general and we're not listening. We don't like what they say or how they say it or where they're taking us. Ask yourself, are you a general with how you lead with your voice? Now, the second one is you could be the spin doctor. Now, part of my leadership time, I have been accused of being a spin doctor. Hey, I believe every day is a great day. Life is a great adventure. And sometimes... Even the worst conditions and worst situations, I can flip around and I can find something good out of it. Sometimes you need to be honest, though. There is no upside. The situation is grim. Rather than being the used car salesman, the spin doctor, sometimes you need to just paint the picture as it is. Now, that doesn't mean it's all doom and gloom. But rather than spin it up and jack it up and make it something it's not, because after a while, people realize you can't see reality or you don't want to see reality. And it gets frustrating for people on how to follow you as a leader. They would much rather have a leader of integrity. Tell them, here's the good. Here's the bad. Here's the ugly. Rather than saying, hey, don't worry. It's always going to turn around. Because we know it doesn't always turn around. Now, the third voice of a leader is the naysayer. Your favorite word, if this is you, your favorite word is no. Not only is it no, usually there's body language in there as well, and it's no. Ask yourself, what are some of your favorite words as a leader? Are you painting a picture of hope? Or are you painting a picture where there's a limited box it's small-minded thinking, even though you have big dreams, but you're never, ever going to really release people. Part of this naysayer mentality of a leader's voice comes from fear. They can hear it in our voice. They can hear it in that little tinge, that little tweak, that you're not sure enough of what you want from others or from yourself, so it's easier to say no and be the naysayer slam on the brakes than to ever take a chance or a risk. Leaders, you've heard it many times on this channel. In fact, I'm going to put a video up here about risk of a leader. There are good risks to take as a leader. 
watch that video and learn, instead of being a naysayer, how to take healthy, good risks. Now, the fourth voice of a leader is the silent giant. I remember pro wrestling, Andre the Giant, big, massive, strong guy, didn't say a lot. He kind of grunted. It was part of the persona they had created for him. But asking yourself, are you the silent giant of a leader? See, your team doesn't know what you really think. You're that flat line of unknown. It's like a gray cloud always walking around. And honestly, as a leader, you're creating an atmosphere of hesitation, walking on eggshells, and people don't know where they really sit. Leaders, we need to speak up. That's what this whole channel is about. I want to help you become a better leader and better communicator, and being a silent giant just really doesn't fly. Now, that doesn't mean you have to always be the cheerleader, the spokesman. You don't have to do everything out there out front. But if you're the top tier leader, your team does need to hear from you. You at least need to step out and let them know you're with them, you got it, and you have their backs. Fifth and final, which I think is probably the best way to go, is you need to be the coach. The coach can be a great dynamic leader. You can be an honest person and give them inspiration and drive and incentive. And you can also critique and analyze in an honest way where it's not being a no, it's not being a naysayer, you're not being the negative barky general. You're just telling it like it is so that they can get to the next level and get to the right place. The coach's voice is always assembling a team, trying to move the pieces around. The great coach does that with his voice. He inspires, he coaches, he cheerleaders, and he also tells the honest truth. You're effective, you're not effective, we need to move you over here, but you're always investing in your people. And I believe as a top tier leader, that caring coach's voice can go so far in helping you reach your goals, build an amazing team, and be a great leader. Now, how do you learn all this? How do you figure out which one of these five you really are? First of all, write down the keywords that you use as a leader. What are your go-to phrases? One of mine is, life is a great adventure. I am a coach. I am a cheerleader. I admit that. I am not a naysayer. And sometimes I've become the spin doctor, as I've mentioned earlier. Talk to your staff. Ask them to evaluate you on what type of a coach, leader you are. Are you a general and you don't even know it? Are you the naysayer, the silent giant, the spin doctor? What are you to your own team? And if you really want to know the honest truth, if you have a spouse, ask your spouse, what type of a leadership voice do I have? How do I demonstrate and come across? Listen to those other voices help you to find your leadership voice. And I do believe you can find your leadership voice. You can change and you can adapt. You must be coachable. You must be willing to hear the tough truth. And you must be willing to address and find where you want to be and make practical steps to get there. So, what's your leadership voice? Who are you when you speak? Give me a like, send me a comment, give me a share, and give me your feedback down below. These are five voices of leaders. Which one are you? Which one do you want to be? And perhaps, are there any other types of voices that leaders have? Until next time, I'm the Trigger, Rich Bond Trigger. God bless, and have a great week.